We good to go? It feels like the perfect night for SwiftCast, a Taylor Swift podcast by the fans for the fans. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 28 of SwiftCast. This is Belle. Ashley. And Nate. How's it going, guys? Ready for another awesome episode of SwiftCast? Heck yeah! I've had a, I think Taylor's had a very interesting week. Yeah, I get you know to say the least. I think <laughs> there's really never a dull moment with her. That's, this there is isn't. I mean, the red tour in the U.S. ends, and she just keeps on trucking. Well, we wanted to remind you guys while we have you here to uh, hit the subscribe button on iTunes if you're listening, because that way it automatically downloads every episode for you, and you don't have to like worry about when the episode's coming out, going to iTunes, downloading it. It just kind of makes it like easy peasy for you. So do it, yay! Um, also, we wanted to remind you that we do have a store. It's at cafepress.com swiftcast stuff. Um, we have like t-shirts and tote bags and stickers and, you know, all sorts of fun stuff. And, um, by the time that you were listening to this, we will have a new design up, sort of a Halloween Swifty design. So you should definitely go check that out. Uh, again, that's cafepress.com swiftcast stuff. And, um, we're really, really happy to bring you guys, bring you guys the show for free. And we're glad that we can do that. Unfortunately, it is not free for us to produce. So um, making a purchase at our store just kind of helps us keep bringing you the show for free. So it, it just helps us out a little bit. Um, so, yeah, you should go check out what we have. And um, although, although, again, let's be mentioned, Taylor is no longer doing any more U.S. Red shows, sad face, but she does have other shows. So I'm going to let Ashley tell you about what's coming up. So as you may know, on November 29th, the Red Tour kicks off in New Zealand, followed by Australia. So Taylor will be in Australia through December 14th. And then in February, she announced five shows in London on February 1st, 2nd, 4th, 10th, and 11th. And right in the middle of those, she is going to go over to Berlin, Germany on February 7th and then come back to London for the other two shows. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, it is really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was kind of weird how they snuck that one in there. (laughs) I'm sure that the Germany show was already scheduled, and then she decided to add the other additional London shows after it. Yeah, that makes sense. Which I don't know why she's teasing us with not releasing more tour dates. Yeah, I don't know why she's releasing them so slowly instead of just a big announcement. Do you guys happen to know if for the Berlin show that if the Vamps are still going to be the opening band? I don't know, but... I am not sure. It would make sense, since it's kind of in the same week. That's true, yeah. Mm. I mean, they could just as easily go over with her and the rest of her crew, and then come back with her and the rest of her crew, so... Uh, Yeah, I I don't know, but I guess we'll find out. I guess we will. For all of you lucky overseas people that get to go see Taylor now, anybody want to take me with? (laughs) I also wonder if she's going to have another opener besides them, like at the same show. Right, yeah, since since Ed's out of the picture now, too. Since she usually has a smaller opening act and then a larger opening act. And I'm not sure if the vamps would be considered smaller or larger. I'm not sure how big they are in the UK. But we'll find out soon. All right, I guess we're going to move on from the Red Shows now and to talk about all the stuff that Taylor has been doing this past week. So it's time for... Keeping up with... Swift! Woohoo! Woohoo! All right, we wanted to remind you guys that the CMA Awards are coming up very soon here on November 6th. Uh, Taylor is nominated for Entertainer of the Year. Uh, She's the only female that's actually nominated for that category. So go, Taylor! Woman power! Yes! Uh, Female Vocalist of the Year, Album of the Year for Red, uh, Single, Musical Event, and Music Video of the Year, all for Highway Don't Care, along with Tim McGraw and Keith Urban. That is a so, ridiculous amount of nominations. I just want to say... Yes, it is. I really feel like at so many award shows, country award shows, Keith Urban gets overlooked and gypped for awards. Yeah, that's 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 very true. Well, he just had a new album come out, so maybe next year will be his year. But he never wins anything, and I just think he's so talented. Yeah, I, I do feel like they underrate him as an artist and entertainer. I agree with you on that one. Uh, speaking of also awesome things happening at the CMAs that involve Taylor, uh, she's going to be performing a very special version of Red, and she's going to be joined by Alison Krauss, Vince Gill, uh, Sam Bush, um, bassist Edgar Meyer, and percussionist Eric Durkin. And that's going to be an interesting... I, I'm very excited to see what they're going to do with this. I think they really described cool. it as a bluegrass version. Oh, really? I was wondering, it, yeah, if it's just Bluegrass be... version of Red. Uh, that's cool. I wonder what uh, what the rest of the agency will be doing during the show. 
maybe they'll just kick back and, and enjoy the, the performance. Yeah, I was wondering if they were going to have a, a part. whole new view for them. Either way, I think it's going to be really awesome. I'm really excited, and I can't wait to see this performance. So the People's Choice Awards are coming up, and Swifties are in the running for fan favorite for the awards. So you can help determine the final nominees at peopleschoice.com. That's pretty awesome. That is awesome. That is us. So let's do it. Yeah. Not only is Taylor nominated for awards, but we are nominated for awards. We that should be. Pretty, cool. pretty good we fans in there. I, I mean, we should. We should. <laughs> we, are pretty, we are pretty awesome. <laughs> Not to toot our own horns or anything, you know, but we're Not pretty to, awesome. You know, yeah, we, we, we deserve something. So if we win, then, <laughs> yeah. does that mean that they break off a little piece of the trophy and send it to each Swifty? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta go Mean Girls style, I mean. That's what I hear. Better get on know. that PCA. It better, better be a pretty big, big trophy. Yeah, it has to be a really big award if they're gonna break it into pieces and toss it off. <laughs> so go vote so that we can win this and get a piece of that trophy. All right, so our next bit of news... Taylor will be performing the last time on The X Factor UK on November 3rd. So I'm pretty excited for that. I know she's only saying it once live um, with Gary Lightbody. She is jet setting all over the place. Now this is going to be like an, like a national performance. So this is, this is pretty exciting. I do have to say, hey, if I had to guess it's to promote her new single, which um, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's November 4th that it gets released in the UK. So wasn't it so, yeah. rumored for a day or two that she was going to be performing Sweeter Than Fiction? Um, it was a Twitter rumor, but there was nothing founded about that that I saw. Mm. Oh, okay. I really I hope she performs that button. soon. I hope so, yeah, too. Yeah, I do want to see that live soon at some point. I, I have a feeling that she is going to perform that for a secret song in one of her international tour dates coming up. But oh, that's yeah. just my thoughts. That's just my feeling, so... Well, I guess that's a piece of news, too, that's happened in between last episode and this episode, is last Sunday night, Sweeter Than Fiction was released on iTunes. This is true. And it was. And I love it. Oh, yeah, wasn't it? (laughs) I have a feeling that some of you may have downloaded it and listened to it a few times. Uh, A few. Uh, (laughs) Only probably a few. Only probably a couple of people that listen right now. You know, not not a whole lot. That's a serious understatement on my end. (laughs) Just, just, just a couple. Uh, also, awesome piece of news is Taylor's going to be, be. Also, awesome piece of news Taylor's going to be performing at Kensington Palace in London on November twenty third at the Winter uh, Winter Whites Gala, and um, this is a gala that's actually a charity. It's um, run by a charity called Centerpoint, and it's for homeless people. And so, um, all the proceeds are going to help this, you know, for this charity. And um, Bon Jovi's also going to be performing at it. So that's kind of interesting. That's really cool. Like yeah. huge, big names. Huge big names, awesome charity. Yeah, Go Taylor. Seriously. Taylor mm-hmm. is constantly everywhere, all over the world, all the time. I want your life. I mean, what? <laughs> just, just saying. Just saying, Taylor. So, for the first time ever, the YouTube Music Awards are happening this year, and Taylor has a um, few nominations. She's nominated for Artist of the Year. And I Knew Your Trouble is nominated for YouTube Phenomenon. So you can, can you vote for that? Um, you can, there's like a video. Um, if you, if you go to YouTube and you just search YTMA on YouTube, it brings you to the video that gives you more details about the awards and like how they're doing all the voting for them and everything. So I have to go back and watch it a second time because I, for some reason I'm confused about whether we are voting or whether we can only like, because, I mean, the nominees have already been announced, so that there's not, like, a initial nominee thing. But I'm not sure exactly how they're determining, determining the final votes. But if you want to learn more about it, uh, search YTMA on YouTube. And I wonder if that's, like, just the I Know You Were Trouble video or if the GOAT video is involved in this nomination. <laughs> <laughs> bah. That GOAT video deserves an award, too, so. Yeah, it deserves an award all its own. Well, speaking of awards, or continuing with awards, I should I should say is um, the Red Tour is nominated for three Billboard Touring Awards this year. They're nominated for Best Package, um, Concert Marketing and Promotion Award, and Eventful Fans Choice Award. So, yeah, she's just getting all kinds of awards this in the past week. Like, this is insane. Yeah, I wonder how many total awards that she has right now. Oof. Like, overall, completely. <laughs> 
wonder where she keeps all of them. I know well, she has no, no wonder that she now owns three different residences. I mean, she needs one of them alone <laughs> just for her awards. <laughs> Makes sense. She has trophy cases. <laughs> let's, yep. just, let's be honest here. <laughs> Those have to be racking up all over the place. Has she ever officially announced that? Has anyone ever asked her that question? What do you do with your awards? Has anyone ever asked her that? You know, I don't think so. And note to self, next time I meet her, <laughs> I'm going to ask Someone her needs that. A, somebody needs to get this answered. Do you have, like, a specific room for your awards, or...? There have to be too many to keep in, like, any one room of of her house. Right, exactly, yeah. I heard... I did hear that her Grammys were on her piano. I did hear that somewhere. I don't know where, and don't quote me, but... Yeah, I did hear that somewhere. Well, that seems like a good place for them. Yeah. <laughs> that it does. Yeah, so if anybody knows the answer to that question, tweet us. And if you don't know the answer to that question, we will try to find out. <laughs> And now I think it's time we're going to move on to some mini-segments. Mini-segments. Love mini-segments. I know, if I had confetti, I'd throw it here, but I don't really have any confetti right now. <laughs> but if I did, I would throw it, because yay, mini-segments! It would be white and red hearts. Yes, just like in Red Tour. <laughs> Our first mini-segment, uh, it's from underscore faded blue jeans on um, Twitter, and it's a Red Tour memory. Taylor announcing her red tour details for Australia and my capital city of Perth being included. It's always nice when she's like right where you live, so you don't have to travel. Yeah, seriously. Coming to your hometown, yeah. That's pretty cool. Our next one is from at 24swiftylove13, getting the number 007 red single. So wow, that's only the seventh red single ever produced in the world. That's insane. And I have like she said, still need the Red Tour to come to Ireland. Swifty problems. That's slightly awesome. That's pretty cool. I'll trade you. Yeah, I have 1908. I just looked at it. Let me know. Get back to me. <laughs> 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 Our next one comes from Arendelle underscore M on Twitter. And they say, the fact Swiftcast is only on once a week. Hashtag Swifty problems. Aww. Aww. We try. We're very busy people. We try our best. Next one is from Chloe Phillips on TC, and this is her Swifty bucket list. Meet Taylor, get invited to Club Red, visit Nashville, get Taylor's autograph, and have her write Last Kiss with it as well. I'm... Oh, cool. All right. Uh, visit Taylor's old hometown, go to another concert, and have a conversation with Taylor. I feel like that number four, that autograph, is, or with Last Kiss, I feel like that might be for a tattoo. Yeah, that's, that's kind of cool, what I was thinking, too. Um, our next submission comes from Enchanted Forever on Taylor Connect. It feels like the perfect night to force my cat to listen to Taylor with me. <laughs> and she also had another submission. She said, having a mini heart attack when Swiftcast reads one of your mini segments, Swifty Problems. Aw. <laughs> Don't have a heart attack. Don't have like an actual heart attack, though, because we, we don't want you to like die or anything. Our next one comes from Forever Always a Swift 13 on Taylor Connect, and it's another Swifty bucket list. Um, and this one's kind of a long one, so. Um, um, but yeah, these are some good ones. We got uh, number one, of course, Meet Taylor. Um, she says, please, 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 can that happen? Aw. And then uh, number two, put on all Wonderstruck, Wonderstruck Enchanted, and Taylor on together all at once. Number three, Blast Highway Don't Care on the Highway. And she doesn't have the CD yet. Um, number four, dress up as Taylor for Halloween and sing five seconds of a Taylor song to whoever answers the door. That's it. That's That'd be a good one. I'd like to see a video of that. Number five, dance to Taylor in the thunder and lightning. Number six, have a swifty day where I only say Taylor lyrics the whole day. Well, <laughs> number seven, go to Nashville. Number eight, perform at the Bluebird Cafe. Number nine, go to Red Tour UK. Number ten, get some Keds. Number 11, dance to 22 wearing a sparkly dress, heart sunglasses, and some cat ears. Number 12, dance and sing to Taylor for 13 hours. And number 13, make a Junior Jewels Bandcamp t-shirt and wear it for as long as it still fits me and not take it off, except for when I'm dancing to 22. I'll be wearing the sparkly dress, heart sunglasses, and cat ears. <laughs> that was a pretty good one. That was very, that was very creative. <laughs> That's cute. Our next one is from Natalia via email. Can't download Sweeter Than Fiction because there's something wrong with your iTunes account. Why me? Swifty problems. I would just wait for iTunes to fix itself and in the meantime go to YouTube and just play it repeatedly over and over again. YouTube while I wait. (laughs) 
Our next Swifty bucket list is from Wonderstruck Anna on Taylor Connect. Number one, meet Taylor. Number two, get ready, get invited to Club Red or Tea Party. Three, go to Rhode Island. Four, visit Nashville. Five, have Taylor autograph my red cads. Six, have front row seats at a concert. And seven, meet Ed Sheeran and Taylor together. That would be cool. That'd be kind of like a rare, rare happening now, too. Ed and Taylor being together, like, in public meeting fans. Yeah, they're not together as much anymore. Yeah. It's just kind of sad. Oh, the sad face. <laughs> Bill's having a rough Ed Sheeran day. <laughs> she always is. <laughs> I'm having a rough Ed Sheeran day. This, is just, this day's been very traumatic. <laughs> now we're going to take a break from my dramatic and traumatic Ed Sheeran feels to um, give, bring you Jamie's segment from Taylor Swift's Closet with this week's Taylor Swift fashion update. Hello everyone, this is Jamie from TaylorSwiftsCloset.com bringing you your weekly fashion update. And this week's segment is going to be a little like story time because last weekend I went to Nashville for the first time ever. And while I was there, I decided I was going to be a little touristy and visit the Country Music Hall of Fame. And I knew the new Taylor Swift Education Center had just opened up there, but I didn't know that they had other Taylor things on display as well. And I got to see the Jenny Packham runway dress that Taylor wore to the Country Music Awards earlier this year. And that dress is the long yellowish one with the cap sleeves, and it's embellished with these reddish coral colored flower sequins that kind of fade out towards the bottom. And it's really beautiful, and I have such respect for designers who put all that work and detail into one evening dresser gown. And that Jenny Packham dress was one of my favorite red carpet looks Taylor has ever worn, so I was super excited to be able to see that in person. Definitely a Taylor Swift fashion blogger's dream come true right there. Um, so if you're in the Nashville area, I highly recommend visiting the Country Music Hall of Fame right now, as they have a lot of really cool exhibits on display and a ton of Taylor stuff at the moment. I also told you last segment that I wanted to talk about the key necklace that Taylor wore in her I Knew You Were Trouble music video, and it kind of has a story of its own. The brand she got her key necklace from is called The Giving Keys, and they are an organization whose goal is to spread happiness and hope, and what they do is they refurbish old keys so that each one is unique, and they engrave messages on them such as brave or survivor or hope and such, and the goal of the organization is that you are supposed to pass on your key to someone who ne- needs the message and try to inspire them and keep, and so it keeps getting passed on down the line of people. And if you go to their website, you can buy a key necklace and you can also read all the really inspirational stories that people have posted about their keys and how it has helped them get through some hard times. And I thought it was a really neat idea and that it was so great that Taylor or whoever designed her outfits for that music video thought of this company and decided to contribute to the cause. If you'd like to contribute, you can get your own key at thegivingkeys.com. And if you go to my website, you can see a close-up of Taylor's Giving Key necklace that was featured in her I Knew You Were Trouble music video, the intro. And I will be back to my normal weekly fashion updates next week, but I hope you enjoyed this little digression and that maybe you were inspired to spread some love to other people and inspire them. And this is Jamie from TaylorSwiftsCloset.com reporting for SwiftCast. Thank you so much again, Jamie. Also, you guys, TaylorSwiftsCloset.com, check it out, find her clothes, buy her clothes, wear her clothes. It's awesome. Seriously, this girl is a genius. Okay, so um, thing for you this week that we got. Um, last episode, um, inspired by Taylor's new role as Rosemary in The Giver, we discussed what other roles that we thought Taylor would do well in um, in different movies. And then in uh, and then we asked all of you guys to let us know what roles um, like you could or you would like to see Taylor in for like a follow-up discussion. So um, here's what you guys had to say. So, Bill, why don't you kick us off? All righty. So, first of all, uh, Leah Davis on Facebook let us know that she thinks that Taylor would be good in a book series called Paranormalcy. Um, I've never actually heard of it, so I don't know if it's like comedy or horror or what character you're thinking of, but it sounds interesting just by the title, so maybe I'll check it out. 
if anybody knows anything about it, let us know because we'd like to like know what where we could picture Taylor in that. Our next submission is from Leo on Facebook, and they said that Taylor would be good as a Bond girl. Taylor would be a perfect Bond girl. <laughs> she would. I, I can see that. I'm looking up this paranormal C book, and the girl on the cover does kind of look like Taylor. Huh. It seems like a sort of fantasy, sci-fi, horror mystery series. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. That's almost like a spot-on cover. That's cool. Wow. Yeah, could you guys picture Daniel Craig and Taylor Swift together in a movie? <laughs> be pretty epic. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be crazy. So anyway, uh, our next one comes from Greaser Swift on Taylor Connect, and uh, she thought that Taylor would be uh, good in The Outsiders. Interesting. She hmm. would sing The Outside. <laughs> 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 nice. Let's see here. Uh, Dorky Swift 13 said that Taylor would be good in any romantic comedy film. Um, I, 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 I could picture that, you know, just seeing her. I mean, she was good in Valentine's Day, even though she had a small role, but I could see her in like a larger, funnier role. Our next one is from at Alex Swifter 13. And she said that she wishes that Taylor had ended up taking the role in Les Mis, which was rumored um, a, a while ago. But it was never confirmed. Yeah, I was kind of hopeful when that rumor was happening that it was true, but apparently, apparently not. I never actually ended up seeing Lamez, so oops. Our next one comes from Slayler Feels on Twitter. And they would like to see Taylor in a horror movie such as House at the End of the Street, the one that, that starred Jennifer Lawrence, like last year, I think. You know, yeah, I saw that. Um, I, mm-hmm. You know what? I think she'd be funny in like a com- like like a horror spoof. A horror spoof. She could pull that scary off, like movie. being in like scary movies. She could pull that <laughs> oh, off geez. so good. Can you just picture her? In, oh my god, she would make that ridiculously funny. Like a I maintain spoof. what I said about comedy roles. I think I think she'd do pretty well. Our next one comes from Standing by Tay thirteen, and she would have liked to see Baby Taylor playing Hermione and Harry Potter the Sorcerer's Stone. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh my gosh, that would have been the cutest thing ever. I could see little eleven year old Taylor in a little in a little witch's costume. She had the hair for it, oh. I think. Definitely. Yeah, she had hair. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Our next one is from TaylorFan696, our friend Michaela on Twitter. Hey, Michaela. Hi, hey, Michaela. Michaela. <laughs> and she thought that Taylor would be good as Deli in the book Mockingjay, which is, I believe, the last Hunger Games book. Yes. I haven't read the books. No, that's an interesting. I could, I could kind of picture that. I, I, I have read the books, so I could... I could kind of see that. Our next one comes from Hemmings Swift on Twitter, and uh, they thought that Taylor would be good as Madge in The Hunger Games. Oh, kind of in the same vein there. But yeah. They said, they said, but they cut her character in the film, so to be fair. so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add on my little um, tiny piece of this Hunger Games to make it a, full, a full-on trilogy here. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> say that I think Taylor would have been interesting as Glimmer in The Hunger Games. I think she could have pulled off that, all right? I mean, it's a smaller role, and I think she could have pulled that off. Are you guys there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, it's mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Our next one is from at Fundin Swifty on Twitter, and they say that Taylor would be good as Natalie in the movie Love Actually. She would probably be flattered by that. She loves the movie Love Actually. <laughs> And uh, our last one, uh, Monique said that she'd be good in a handful of different roles. Uh, she thinks she would have been good in a movie called Ghost World. And um, I'm surprised that somebody else even knew about this movie because it was kind of an independent movie, sort of along the lines of like Napoleon Dynamite humor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and um, But I've seen it before, and it was Thora Birch and Scarlett Johansson. I could I could have seen her in Scarlett's role, so I could I could understand that. Um, more voiceover work, like she did in the Lorax. I think that she did a really good job with that. should be good in that. more of those. Mm. Yeah. And then she said, um, a lot of roles that Drew Barrymore played in, like, her earlier roles in, like, movies from, like, ten years ago, like, Never Been Kissed and Ever After and Fifty First Dates and stuff. And, I mean, I, you know, again, that just goes off to her being able to kind of be funny in romantic comedies, which I could see. And then lastly, she said that she could pull off some guest spots in, like, Grey's and House. I think if she had a guest spot on Grey's, she'd probably much consider her life complete. <laughs> So thank you so much, you guys, for um, all of your replies. We definitely wanted to do this follow-up discussion, and you guys definitely had some um, interesting uh, perspectives on roles Taylor could do. So thank you for submitting those and letting us know what you think. We like it when you participate. It makes us happy. 
So now we're going to kick off our main discussion. And the question that we're going to be asking each other and you guys as listeners is, you know, in our in our opinions and in your opinions, how far is too far in terms of trying to meet Taylor? Um, examples would be like the people that like literally have tried to like break onto her property to meet her and everything. Um, you know, that's one thing. But then there's like the but then there's also, you know, the shadier, grayer areas of, you know, is this OK or is it not OK? And an um, example of that would be something that happened this past uh, over this past weekend here. Um Taylor has been going to this dance studio a lot in LA. People have seen her coming and going and paparazzi's been taking pictures. And um, a couple of fans, I guess, got somehow got a hold of a phone number and called the studio trying to talk to Taylor. And, um, you know, it caused a bit of an uproar on Twitter. You know, some people saying that's a horrible thing to do and some people cheering them on and saying, you know, that's hilarious. And, you know, I guess the question that we're just going to ask ourselves is like, what what do we think is kind of the limit on you know, how far a fan should go to try and meet and speak to their idol. Um, I don't know, Nate, why don't, why don't you well, uh, kick us off with an opinion? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm just going to, like, I'm just going to throw the people under the bus right now that, that break onto a property or, or, you know, do something that kind of puts their life in danger. I, I always feel pretty strongly about that. Like, anything you do to, to put Taylor's life in danger, that's that's just a no-no, so. Agreed. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, that one, I think, it almost goes without saying, though, to be honest, so. Um, but just in terms of, um, otherwise, like what, what kind of limits should like a, well, I don't want to say a normal fan, but you know, a dedicated fan, um, what kind of limits, um, let's see, maybe like, um, anything that would, I guess, disrupt her day or, uh, no, that's not the right way to put it. Let me, let me restate that. I guess for like a dedicated fan, like what kind of limits, um, maybe like in my opinion, anything that would... Um, anything that would um, cause someone to have a bad day or cause someone to go out of their way and do more work than what it's worth to um, either clean up, I guess, something that, you know, you've, you've tried to do on the way to, to meeting Taylor or um, basically so that there's no, like, there's no ripple effect that, that has, like, a negative effect, I guess, on, on other people. So, um, if that makes sense, I guess. So, like, if... For example, um, and this is just what I heard because I really don't know a whole lot of what happened. But for example, I heard that um, perhaps like some of the receptionists or something were, or um, like at the um, at the dance studio were uh, possibly like uh, irritated or annoyed or you know kind of had to deal with things like that. I mean, it, once you start like kind of encroaching on someone else's personal time or something like that that's maybe when you kind of want to draw the line. So I don't know. I don't know. That's just my opinion though. I'm really kind of like a, uh, I've been told before I'm pretty diplomatic. So I always try and keep things kind of level with a lot of people. So uh, yeah, I don't know, but I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, obviously, you know, I feel like anybody should have the sense to know that even if you are calling the place where she's at, they're not going to go, disrupt her dance lesson and give the phone to her <laughs> hey taylor you have a phone call <laughs> it is it is kind of funny to yeah. and even if by some crazy chance that did happen is that really how you want her to get to know you by you like violating her boundaries and disrupting you know what she was doing <laughs> she has such limited time and everything is on such a tight schedule do you really want to like throw off her day i wouldn't I mean, my opinion is basically this, like, if I'm sitting in a restaurant, and it's like a casual restaurant, not like a ridiculously fancy restaurant or whatever, you know, and all of a sudden, two tables away from me, one of, one of my favorite stars, a musician, an actress, whatever, sits down, I'm not going to say that I wouldn't go over there and say hi and maybe ask for an autograph or a picture. Right. But mm -hmm. if I did, I would be quick, I'd be brief, you know. Um, I would try not to take up much of their time and then I'd be gone. So I'm not going to say I wouldn't do it, but I'm going to say like, I wouldn't, I, I would try to not, not to impro, you know, encroach on their time. You know what I mean? Right. Mm. I'd be pol very polite. And if they, you know, and if they were in a situation where they're like, you know what, I'm just trying to enjoy myself with my family. I'd be like, I'm really sorry. Go for it. You know, mm. but Taylor, obviously she's a very polite person and she doesn't, you know, she's very, very polite about people coming up to her. However, I think that there is a difference between if you happen to see, you know, run into a star that you like or if you purposely hunt them down on their personal time. That's where I think, in my opinion, it's like a line gets drawn. Like, I think that, right. you know, 
doing something like calling a dance studio and trying to disrupt her time. Like, she's not there to sit and have a cup of tea. She's at a <laughs> dance studio for a dance lesson, for whatever she's doing it for. I've heard rumors about a music video. Maybe she just wanted to learn how to dance. Like, whatever. She's obviously there to dance, not to lounge around and wait for your telephone call. You know? <laughs> like, and, like, I, I agree with what Ashley said. I think it's like, is that how you want her to know you as a fan? Like, I hunted down the number to your dance studio, and I'm calling it to get you on the phone. It's a little, you know... I, I mean, I'm just trying to put myself in her shoes and be like, um, I, you know, like, that's, that's, that's a little bit, because there is sort of that's that true. line between, like, a fan who tries really hard to get her at a meet and greet and a fan who breaks onto her property, and then all, everything else in between is, like, it's kind of a gray area, but gray is sketchy. It might not be outright horrifying, but it's sketchy. I mean, if somebody's going to hunt down the number to your dance studio and call you, how would you not how would you know for sure that they wouldn't be the person that would also like break onto your property? I mean, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that you would, if you were that, you know, I'm the person that did that would, but I'm just saying like you, there's a sketchy gray area with all of that, that you, you know, there's one end of the spectrum, another end of the spectrum and everything in between is gray. And you are in, you were in sketchy territory. If you kind of go into that gray area, because you don't really know how that's going to come off to someone else. And I understand, like, you know, to someone else's point of view, it might be like, oh, it's all in good fun. But you have to think about how that comes off to other people, namely the person that you're trying to get a hold of, you know? Um, I think that the first and foremost important thing about being someone's fan should be respecting them. I completely agree. Yeah. You know, and another thing is just like, you know, I saw my Twitter timeline kind of in an uproar about this topic and some people were completely for it and completely against it. And, you know, it was this big old war, but, you know, again, my, I have to state that it's like, to me, it's all gray. Like, I, I, w I wouldn't personally do that. I'm not going to say that I wouldn't go up to her if I happened to run into her, but I wouldn't go trying to, like, purposely find her, like, while she was recording. I mean, they, basically, that's no different than finding out what recording studio she's at when she's working and trying to call that. It's the, you know, like, that's, that's not really her personal time. It's her doing, it's her obviously doing something. So I just think, like, you should have enough respect for the person that you, you know, say that you're a fan of to think about, you know, or am I going to disrupt this person if I go up to them or call them? Um, you know, and again, I know you guys brought up a good point about the receptionists, too. If fans are passing out that number and every two seconds the phone is ringing with a fan trying to talk to, talk to Taylor, they can't do their jobs. Right, exactly, yeah. You know, and you have to think about that, too. Like, you're not just, you know, bugging Taylor, but you're hampering somebody from doing their job. Like, it's not like, I mean, like Ashley said, what if, then she's not going to give the phone to Taylor, you know? No, a fan's, right, exactly. you know, I'm going to interrupt your dance lesson because a fan is on the phone for you. That, that's not going to happen. And, you know, so I don't really know what was trying to be accomplished with that, I guess. I, I don't know. I think people, you know, just got excited that they had a way of potentially right. being able to reach Taylor and just did right. it without thinking. And who yeah. wouldn't be? I mean, I mean, anyone would be excited like that. Even in with Taylor? I mean, like, really? Yeah, that's that's a fair point. Um, yeah, I guess. I, I, guess I, I think, yeah, it just comes with, like, a, you, you just need to kind of have a rational way of thinking about it instead of, <laughs> you gotta you got to think of any consequences that might, you know, that might arise out of what you do, so... I don't know. Of course, I'm not like grilling anyone who did anything, but you know, that's that's just that's not what I'm doing, and that's not who I am to to do that. But and you know, who am I to say anything about it anyway? But at the same time, yeah, I don't know. It just, in my opinion, I think it I think it just comes with a lot more. Just deserves a lot more caution or a lot more, um, you know, a lot more thought before you you know you put it into something or before you do something like that. So. Yeah, I mean, I think the uh, you know the bottom line with this thing is like. I'm sure that the people that were doing that, you know, like Nate said, weren't trying to, you know, to do it to be malicious or anything like that. Like, I'm oh, sure, absolutely not, right. You know, people just got excited. It was probably all in good fun to them. But I think it's just important to, you know, remember, like, that how what might be in good fun to you might kind of freak somebody else out or maybe offend them. You just kind of have to think about what you do before you do it. I mean, we all do. That's, you know, a good a good lesson for all of us, I think. Sometimes, you know, we all do stuff without thinking it through. I know I do sometimes. I've got a hot temper. <laughs> <my day>. um, <laughs> Nate laughs because he knows it's true. 
So I think that lesson can kind of be transposed not only just on Taylor, but on, on a lot of things just in just in just kind of everyday life, I guess, before you I guess, think before you act almost, I guess, you know, I, I'm sure you guys have heard something to that effect before. So I don't know. Um, but whether it be Taylor or whether it be whether it be in Bell's case, probably Ed or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or, uh, you know, or just anyone, you know, like a, a friend or, you know, an acquaintance, a boss, you know anything like that. So I don't know, just comes, I think everything just kind of comes with the amount of, uh, it, it, just to show your respect. I mean, just be kind of, just to be respectful in things you do, I guess. So just be aware of what you're doing. So I don't know. It's just, that's just my bit on it. I think that's definitely fair. Um, yeah. So w- what do you guys think? Like, let us know, um, tweet us, Facebook us, Taylor connect us. Like, we're just curious that we, we know this is a little bit of a touchy subject, but we're just curious, like, what does everyone else think about, you know, all of this? And yeah, just feel free to share your opinions. Like we should always feel free to share ours. So we're on a little bit of a time crunch tonight, you guys, and we're going to skip the Taylor quote and save it for next week. Uh, but before we go, we do want to let you know that um, our iTunes giveaway is still going on. Um, all you got to do is go to our iTunes page, rate us five stars, and leave us a review. Super easy. Um, it's helpful for us because it just lets us know, like, what you like about the show, what you don't like about the show. Um, you know, it just helps us. We make the show for you, so we want to make sure that, you know, we're doing stuff that you like and talking about stuff that you want to hear. So that's one thing. And also the more uh, rankings and reviews that we have, or the more ratings and reviews that we have, excuse me, um, the higher we rank up on iTunes, then it's easier for other Swifties to find us. So if you want to help more Swifties find us and listen to us, you should do that. And then when we, when we get to 50 reviews, and we're close to that now, uh, we'll be giving away a red sticker and a pack of red guitar picks to a random person that has left us a review. So you should go do that because you're nice and you love us. I know you guys do. <laughs> we know you love us. It's a Swifty thing. <laughs> All right, well, we will return next week again with um, other interesting discussions and more news and the Taylor quote. But for now, this has been episode 28, and this is Belle. Ashley. And Nate. And you guys have an awesome week. Halloween. Woohoo! Woo-hoo. Have a good Halloween, guys. Hey, and if anybody dresses up as Taylor or anybody from the agency, send us <laughs> uh, Yes, please. Please do that. Please. We must see. <laughs> All right. Happy Halloween, everyone. All right. See you guys. Bye. Peace out, Swift Scouts. We are in no way directly affiliated with Taylor Swift. <laughs>